I'm putting together this video about a number of items that I value a lot stuff I have bought and have been using for years some of this stuff is actually featured on my shopping page as well but most of it is not a lot of it is small items so I don't necessarily include them in my on my landing page but I do put in a link for each and every item discussed in this video below so if you're interested in investigating you just need to scroll down and and click the first item I never write out without is my Oakley the Oakley I have is much more expensive than this it's a titanium piece I think it would cost about four hundred dollars to get it now as of late 2023 I have I have the, obviously the titanium frame I have I have a glass that adjusts to the light level still so, so you can use it indoors and outdoors and I like understated styling which is similar to what you see here and this is just an example that you can get a brand name set for not a lot of money I think 50 bucks for an Oakley is not a lot of money and if you take care of it you can use it for maybe a decade or so if you go for metal like titanium mine is now 20 years old so it's gonna last even longer I have a prescription lens I have the this light adjustment feature in the glass I have a, a color saturation enhancement coating on it so I really maxed out on it you don't have to but the thing is when you ride a twig an insect can cause serious damage so I don't think anybody should be riding anywhere on a bicycle or motorcycle or scooter without wearing some kind of an eye protection and of course speaking of eye protection I also have my brand name helmet I actually don't believe you need a helmet unless you ride fast I if you don't go faster than 20 miles an hour you don't really need a helmet it's highly unlikely that you'll salto over the top of your head at those speeds and hit your head however to protect against cold weather in the winter like from around uh, just under 50 degrees or so from November to March I do wear something like this I paid two hundred dollars for it you can get the same kind of helmets that has a, a windshield it's absolutely essential that it has to have a windshield because that's what's protecting you from the cold wind coming in it protects you protects your eyes not, not just from impact and then the cold but it prevents tearing and if you want to get a cheaper helmet if you get want to get really cheap helmets you can get a helmet for 50 bucks and it looks like a brand name helmet but it's gonna be utterly uncomfortable also these hard hats which are not really helmets uh, to me they are use useless this is actually more similar to what I have this one I have an older version of the same thing I paid two hundred dollars for it maybe five years ago it wraps it wraps around your eyes so if somebody opens the door in your face a car door which is gonna to happen to everyone it has happened to me it happens to everyone in my case I have double protection for my face and for my eyes I have the helmet and I have my goggles or glasses underneath so it costs money but it's totally worth it then this is the so-called balaclava not to be confused with the baklava dessert this is for winter riding and it it's a total lifesaver I buy only the, the pieces that are 100% cotton because I don't like plastic against my skin they are reasonably warm what what you're really buying this for is that it's going to prevent discharge in your nose as a result of the cold weather which happens to a lot of people I know it's happening to me and it also seals this area that's not protected by any of your helmets or even if you have a full face helmet it's not gonna protect the, your neck you have a scarf but there is that little gap and I love to close that little gap with this thing 
And even if you take off your helmet in the cold, you still have something on your head to protect you. So useful, so inexpensive. Then lights. Obviously, not everybody rides in pitch black darkness in a forest. But even if you live in a city, you should have something. You should have some kind of a visibility light. This is the one I am using. It's enough for what I use it for. In other words, so long that you are in an urban area, this is going to be enough. It, it's actually more than a visibility light. It's not as bright as, as they claim as it is. I mean, the 120 feet, no way. But it's better than nothing. As far as a, a light for the rear is concerned, I don't like these, these combo packages because they cut corners. I bought a separate rear light. And this is much fancier because it's not only metal, it's not just plastic, but it does have a brake sensing feature built in, which I think is really, really neat. As you brake, it senses that the bike is trying to stop and, it, and the light becomes more intense. You can even buy uh, other rear lights that allow you to, to use them as a turn signal. I tried some of those. I found them to be really complicated and intricate, so I gave up. But uh, having brake sensing, I think, is a nice feature. Not to mention that it's a good-looking light. Here is the rear mirror I recommend. I now use a larger mirror, but to be honest, once that uh, gets worn out I'm probably going to go back to this one if you have a folding bike or a separable frame bike then having a compact mirror that sort of stays out of the way or even is quick release so you can just remove it if you fold the bike is is, is really helpful if you have a folding bike you can place it anywhere you want to place it it's easy to remove it you can put it in in your pocket when you get on the train or you're inside the restaurant you don't have to wrestle with a big light i mean with a big mirror same thing with the bell i don't care which bell you get but you should have a bell on your bike when you're on the greenway and there are people around at least some of them are going to pay attention. Of course, there were others who never pay attention. And I tried uh, loud horns, but those I don't recommend. You can have both of them, and then you use the loud horn with the cars in traffic. But using that horn on the pregnant mothers and kids and dogs, it is just not a good idea. When you're in a park or in a greenway, I recommend a bell. A bell everybody should have. If you want to have a horn or you don't want to have a horn, that's up to you. These are valve extensions. And if you're riding small wheels, especially if you have a big complicated hub, either an electric hub motor or a bigger hub gear set, it's going to be really tough to get most of the pumps in. And this totally eliminates that problem. It sticks out on the side of the wheel. And you can choose the angle so it's not gonna be in the way as as you fold the bike but you will be able to easily inflate it with almost any pump there is there is no um, obstruction of any sort and the whole set only costs five bucks for both wheels so i definitely rec highly recommend it as far as my ride videos are concerned those are shot with a gopro GoPros are not cheap, but as far as image stabilization is concerned, I think they are the best there is. I once had, in fact, if my if you look at my early videos on my YouTube channel, I I started out with a fifty dollar <laughs> cheap camera. It's really awful because it shakes so violently. You basically get what you paid for. The unfortunate part of the GoPro is that they don't really have any real GPS support. Even if they claim that they have it, my camera is supposed to have a built-in map, but I just can't get it to work. I've even sent it back to them, and they sent me a new one, and the new one has the same problem. So the reason for the GoPro is really the quality of the video and the image stabilization is a big part of that. There is a way, in fact, there are several ways 
that you can use software to track your GPS and to layer um, speedometer and map data over the video once you're done. Hot hands. Hot hands in the winter, I always use them. I would not be able to ride without them. I use them in my shoes as well. They have toe warmers as well, but you can also just use the hot hands. The thing is, whatever you get, don't get too many because you have to use them up in one season. If you try to use last season's hot hands, they kind of expire after a year or so. So instead of heating, when they are brand new, they will heat you for 8 to 10 hours. But once they get older, it's going to be more like 20 or 30 minutes. So I have a half a bag left over from last year. And I just ordered a new, one, new pack because the old ones just don't do much. Cotton face mask. I first purchased my set of face masks in uh, 2012. So I was almost a decade ahead of COVID. I did not buy it for COVID because there was none. But when you fly and when you get on public transportation for hours on end, you often end up getting sick. And when you go for a vacation, um, it's just annoying. You get a flu and it takes a first few days to recover from it. If it's a tropical vacation, if it's not, then it's going gonna, it's gonna to be hell. So I bought it for that, but ever since then, I have been using it even on the bike if I don't want to put on a balaclava to cover my whole face. Like it's around the, in autumn weather, around 50 degrees, then I might use the face mask because it's so useful. And I don't believe in destroying nature, so I don't use the disposable masks. I use all 100% cotton washable masks like the ones you see, you see here. For t-shirt, I don't like polyester. I don't wear plastic against my skin. So for riding, whether summer or winter, I use this brand. I think this is a really good brand. Very nicely fit and holds up really nicely over time. The ideal solution would be a silk t-shirt, but I have not been able to find one. It would be expensive, I have no doubt, but I would cough up the money just for a couple of them, just for riding. They have the same characteristics of not absorbing water without being plastic. So if, it's, if you can't find a silk uh, t-shirt, you have two choices. You can go for the polyester t-shirt or you can get a high quality 100% cotton shirt like this one. And if you don't like the sweat, you may want to take it off in the summertime if you have the body for it or carry a, um, a replacement, carry two or three of them. And going into a little bit of uh, personal care, when I was new in New York, like 20 years old, some of the older, more experienced riders told me that unless you put cream on your face and you ride in the winter, within five years, your face, your skin on your face is gonna look like a shoe rag. And I saw some of the older guys with their with their ugly skin, and I started using something cheap from the local store. This is a more expensive, although still reasonable package. It's aloe, and it's incredibly silky. It's very easy to to wear it even in the summer heat. So I use it year round, and I use it on face and body as well. Some people will go for something cheaper, and certainly anything, even the cheapest cocoa, cacao, butter, whatever it is, is going to make a huge difference if you use it consistently, consistently, and on body and face. I totally recommend it. This is a very high quality product for not that much money. And speaking of skin for soaps, I use a Greek olive oil soap typically from Amazon, but sometimes I also get them retail because in New York, in the, in the Greek neighborhood, in Astoria, they have several brands of them. This is gentle enough to be used on the face and the body, so I use them in addition to the cream. And something a bit luxurious, obviously you want to have you want to have something against sweating, especially if you commute to work in an office. This is a bit more expensive that 
than what most people want to spend. But one piece lasts on me for I don't know how many months, maybe half a year. I don't know how long it lasts. It really just goes on and on. So instead of spending $4, for me, it's worth it to spend a few dollars more and to get something of really ex exclusive quality. And this uh, Occitane is, is really nice. The fragrance of it, the way it feels, you get what you pay for. Here is Sunny Hands. I use them, boy, I've been using them for decades. I use them for flying. I wipe my hands. I wipe the seat with it. I actually use this to commute to work on a bike. And I would break a little bit of sweat. This was before I had an electric. And so I would break some sweat and I would go into the bathroom. And you can wipe and completely sterilize your armpits with this thing. And then you carry your fancy deodorant and you go on top of it and nobody's going to be able to tell that you didn't drive to work. And I use it at home. I use it for everything. Whenever I, I wipe the counter in the kitchen with it. So it's about 20 bucks for 100 wipes and those last for months. For nutrition, I used to take vitamins and minerals, but they are not natural. They are they are kind of uh, synthesized or separated. So you would get these various vitamins that are separated from the natural structure of the plants that they were extracted from. This is really expensive stuff, but what they do is they take some highly nutrition dense algae or something and they take out the, fi the fiber and the water and what you are left with is this, is this dust, this powder. And this powder is totally naturally interconnected and organic. So it gets absorbed into the body a lot more readily than when you buy those cheaper separated vitamins and minerals. Not to mention that you get the full matrix. This is exactly the stuff that was in the plant. It's not never been separated. They go together. It's so much easier on the body. But I admit that I don't eat them every day because they are so expensive. Expensive but really good. My water comes from a Berkey gravity fed filter. I've had the reverse osmosis unit. As far as the little carbon filters are concerned, they are completely useless. They don't take the the fluoride, which is a stubborn poison, out of tap water. They don't take rust from the, the pipes and copper and, and iron and things like that out. And they are also dependent upon water pressure. So what if there's no water in your building? Same thing with the water distillers. They are very effective, but you have to have electricity to run them. If there is something, some problem with the electricity, uh, they are not going to work. With these gravity-fed units, you can get an awful lot of water. This one is good according to their claim for 6,000 gallons. I replace the, the filter elements only when the, the taste of the water changes. And I've had this filter for a number of years, so I can sense, I can feel from the taste that the, the elements need to be replaced. Unfortunately, it's really expensive, and you definitely must get an upgrade. The, this uh, tap unit on it is made of plastic, which ruins the experience. They offer a steel upgrade. I don't know if you can get it from Amazon. Maybe you have to go to the Berkey website, but it's like an extra 15 bucks. I had it from the beginning. I don't like the taste of plastic, and I'm not filtering the water so that I could be drinking water with plastic particles in it. It's a really nice looking unit as well. It fits in most any kitchen, modern or classic. It has a classy appearance, but unfortunately this is what it costs. It's not cheap. There are cheap knockoff units, but I don't recommend those. And finally toothpaste. When I turned 40, I had this weird dull soreness and um, just a dull, like kind of a low-level pain around the roots of my teeth, all of them. And that was because as you age, your teeth are losing minerals. And so I couldn't eat anything with sugar in it. The slightest bit of even natural sugar, like honey or something, 
would be would make me ter terribly uncomfortable. So using natural materials, which come from some kind of a mud, that so these kind of toothpaste come from some kind of a mineral mud. I don't know where they mine them, but I started using them and. Within 40 days, all of the pain was gone, and I never stopped using them. I used this brand, and I'll give you a link below, and I used this brand as well. This one is a little bit cheaper, I think, but it still has that, that the mineral mud in it, or clay. I think it's called clay. And you have to be careful because clay is also abrasive, so you just want to be really gentle, and I use a gentle toothbrush as well. But this is totally worth it. I could not live without this toothpaste. Then finally the hairs on the back, which most men struggle with. I once paid $80 for a wax treatment at a spa. And it was so painful, time-consuming, and expensive. This thing cost $30, and it actually uses average Joe uh, blades. Blades that you can get for practically nothing. You can buy 100 blades like this for 10 bucks. And they will last probably for the rest of your life. And in five minutes, you can clean up the back. So for personal hygiene. And finally, I left it for last. The most unusual item that I carry with myself, given that I ride a $5,000 bicycle, and I have had problems. I Back in the day, not now, but a while back, uh, the people tried to bike jack me, in fact, more than once. So just in case somebody starts an argument, I want to make sure that unless they have a gun, they don't have much of a chance. It's up to you if you want to go to this extreme, obviously. So these are fun items that I don't necessarily list on my landing page. Most of them are small, less expensive items, but it's worth checking them out. That's it for the video. and. Uh, Keep on following, sharing, and liking, and I'll be back in a few days.